Right, so MP of the Year, West Derby's Ian Byrne, the guy behind fans supporting food banks, the Right to Food campaign, the go-to MP for all things to do with food poverty. Massive issue growing ever worse as this cost of living crisis rumbles on, is up against it when it comes to retaining the parliamentary candidacy for his seat. Because despite the brilliant work he's done and is still doing, he's committed the Samurai crime of having been caught doing socialism. The ultimate crime in what passes for the Democratic Socialist Labour Party of Keir Starmer these days. It resulted in Ian being triggered in a process so marred with flaws and flagrant breaches of the party rules that the party official overseeing it refused to sign off on the results. But hey, this is Starmer's Labour now. His party, if you listen to him. So they soon found somebody in London who would. Of course, the other crime being committed by these Starmery types, that of not being very democratic, is being widely overlooked because if they got pulled off on being anti-democratic, well, that might give Ian a fair chance of holding onto his seat. They can't have that. They want somebody who will... Do as they're told in Parliament. Don't be so bothered about dealing with little things like poverty, which for too many Labour MPs and their right-wing supporters is a complete irrelevance. The latest pathetic stunt pulled by the party is to effectively gag Ian Byrne, not just from campaigning, but actually being able to communicate with his local party members at all. Labour have removed Ian's access to organise, which is Labour's internal communication facility between the party hierarchy and its members. As an MP, Ian would have access to this to organise events, contact members in his area. Yet he now, despite being the MP, cannot do any of that. His long-listed rivals who want to displace the MP of the year and anyone wishing to replace an MP recognised for doing exactly what they're elected to do, serve their constituents, you just know are only in it for themselves. Byrne's main rival in this contest is an overly ambitious young man called Anthony Lavelle, complete with shiny face and rictus grin. He's literally the Scouse West streeting. He's a Liverpool councillor. He wanted to be Liverpool mayor. He failed at that. Now he's sniffed an opportunity to become an MP instead. And despite all the blatant shenanigans which have presented him with this opportunity in this seat, he's going for it. Lavelle has a problematic track record which he still hasn't answered for, including the alleged bullying of a disabled woman, saying things like she was only on crutches to claim benefits, calling her a mistake and wishing her dead, and more, impacted on her mental health severely. He's published a video saying this person or that person have endorsed him in his campaign, despite many of the footage actually having had come out for Ian Byrne. And in fact, it was only when this was emailed to people that it became clear that he had access to organise where Byrne no longer did. The Labour Party is not fighting fair, wants to ditch a quality MP for someone with abuse allegations made against him of a nature that, if proven, would make him grossly unsuitable to be an MP and should have barred him from being considered for the seat, frankly, until he's answered for them. A man who has apparently lied on film about his support, aided and abetted by the party management, turning Labour ever more against the needs of ordinary people and ever more into an establishment-friendly gravy train for people who should be nowhere near power. If they treat their own party like this, how would they run the country? John McTernan, former advisor to Tony Blair, who knows a thing or two about losing after advising the ill-fated Julia Gillard campaign in Australia and Jim Murphy up in Scotland, summed up what Labour really think of their MP of the year. I'd argue that since you aren't a democratic socialist, John, you've said it yourself, you call yourself the reverse, a centrist liberal, basically, it's you that doesn't belong in Labour. The party has been hijacked utterly by the likes of McTernan. He's ridiculous enough to come out and say, what they're all thinking, basically. But it's the likes of Ian that have the real endorsements. Here's all the trade unions that have formally endorsed his candidacy, for example. Other endorsements are coming in too, despite Ian having to effectively try and campaign by using social media to get the word out. He's fighting an uphill battle to keep his place in a parliamentary party that doesn't want him because fundamentally he shows them up, doing the job an MP is supposed to do. We need more Ian Burns, not fewer. And if Labour keep travelling in this direction, shouts of vote Labour to get the Tories out are going to sound more hollow and more pathetic than they already do.